Yo, what's up guys? A new kind of beginner video. Well, not actually, it's just one beginner video. It's not going to be a series. This was a speedrun that I did a few days ago. And it was a speedrun with the final goal of running Dragon's Abyss Heart 10 times on auto. How did that work out? Well, we're going to see in this video. In this video, I'm not going to go specifically through like all of the scenes, what I did, like some highlights of that. I'm just going to uh, do like a voiceover on specific parts that I did as highlights and then also explaining like what went right, what went wrong, something like that. So where did this idea came from? Well, it's actually a combination of two things. I did do a speed run on this game before and there was a speed run. I think I did it like quite a few years back of trying to clear the scenarios as fast as possible because we know this game has been getting easier and easier over the years i did like the beginner guide i did the beginner series like starting last year in october or something like that and the game is getting a lot easier on a lot of fronts and for that reason it's also interesting to see like okay is it possible for people to catch up on a fast amount of time because in the end you want to farm abyss dungeons abyss dungeons are the best thing to do the moment that you can farm dragon's abyss hard on the new account you're technically getting the same amount of rewards per energy as I'm getting for Dragon's Abyss Heart. The only difference is I can clear it faster than a beginner account. But in the end, for the energy spent, we're still getting the exact same rewards. So for that reason, it's definitely something that you want to be focusing uh, first towards to getting as fast as possible. I do have this whole thought um, still on Twitch. It's only going to be safe there for like, I think, 20, 20 days or so. I'm not entirely sure. I could put the whole vault on YouTube as well. It is an option. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in that. I, I could actually place that over there as well. Wouldn't edit it with like any video or like anything because it's a pretty lengthy vault, that's for sure. But yeah, so what is the difference with the speed run right now? Well, as you can see, we have a timestamps over here. I would say that if I would redo this right now, I would add in a few extra timestamps, but the timestamps that we have right here or not the timestamps, the segments that we have right here are getting Gerald finishing the scenario, getting Verdale, getting Veramos, and then ready the team, and then finishing off with the Dragon's Abyss Heart. I would say uh, making first six star would also be your most, the first six star on max level. Um, could be a segment. Um, you could add in the segment of getting Lauren, because Lauren is absolutely needed for this uh, speed run. And yeah, that's mainly it. People were asking like, okay, so you're gonna do a 24 hour stream. So I did do this before on like a beginner account, the one I did in October, and it took me about four days to get like a proper running team. And since we have the Gerald, I expect the Gerald to do pretty well. And therefore for that reason, I was like, um, I, I think it's totally going to be fine to simply get it in a lot faster. And with getting it in a lot faster, I think it would totally be doable to do this in 24 hours. My hope somewhat uh, during uh, this, I was like, okay, I hope to do it in like under 12 hours. And from there, I just saw like, okay, how far are we gonna get towards getting all of this? I would definitely say that currently the events for uh, the Witcher collab are pretty good, but there's besides the Witcher collab, not anything good events going on. And that's the main thing about speedruns as well. Like how good is the event that currently is running? Because currently we have the event with Geralt, and Geralt actually comes with a very good rune set. But if you start as a beginner, you actually are going to get four good rune sets straight off the get-go. So that also means you have four rune sets from just the uh, beginner quest that you have, like the Summoner's Way or whatever it's called. And then you also have the good rune set that you get from uh, Geralt. So you have five good rune sets. So my thoughts was like, okay, I use these exact five rune sets on five particular units. And with that, I can easily clear, uh, clear Dragon's Abyss Heart. Well, some of the units are in the segments. Well, actually, three of them. So the Gerald, the uh, Ferdy Hill, and the Veramos. Those are definitely going to be in. I didn't put the segment in for Lauren, but that's going to be monster number four. And then monster number five, I was using Tyron in the uh, last time that I did it on the, um, what's it called, on the beginner account. You do have an event at some point where you can choose a net five, or it's like this summon event, like the same thing similar to what we have right now with the 10 times summon, and then you choose one, but then it's like unlimitedly summoning net fours, and then you choose one of those net fours. I wanted to get Tyrone for that because I think Tyrone is the best option for your Dragon's Abyss first team. However, it would have been like nice if I could do it full free to play. So I was also thinking about like how about just the uh Lapis, the Magic Knight, which also is known for me to be called the Magic Mike. So Water Magic Mike was the unit for me. Like if I get the Water Magic Mike, 
that is going to be my unit and with that unit i'm actually going to try to clear it if not i could also work towards a spectra making a spectra 2a but making a spectra 2a definitely is a lot easier right now they really lowered the difficulties of those uh 2a dungeons and with lower difficulties of those 2a dungeons it's definitely doable to get a spectra 2a on the first day However, it's just going to take quite some time because farming those 2A dungeons is still going to be like two minutes of run. You got to farm, I think, for like a 2A if you start off with a level one first. I think a 2A or just on level five is like 87 runs. Uh, a 2A with starting like level one, level two, level three is probably going to take you a total of, I would say, like 95 runs or something or a little bit more, like 98 maybe. So definitely something that's doable to do. But yeah, in this case, we first needed to get the uh, Witcher tokens. You only need 50 Witcher tokens and then you can get Geralt. If you get another 100 Witcher tokens on top of that, you're getting Geralt max skilled. Plus good runes that are all plus 15. So you actually get an insane amount of like good stuff from the get-go. And that makes it so easy to farm all of these dungeons. And early on, you're just following Summoner's Way. If you follow Summoner's Way, it's just pretty much taking you by the hand, telling you do this, do that. Just literally do everything they tell you to do. And with that, it's just super easy to progress. It's it's not really difficult. The game is literally explaining you like, hey, there's something over here. There's something over there. You get good stuff here. You get good stuff there. And you just get like the units. You use those units and it's pretty easy. You don't really have to farm on or I focus on farming. You don't really have to focus on like where do you have to spend your resources all too much. Of course, it definitely does help a bit if you know like how to upgrade runes, which runes are good and that kind of stuff. But in all honesty, I think like for the first probably few days of playing, if you just get those um, runes that you get from the achievement of just spending energy, which is actually going to be a very interesting one, um, keep in mind spending energy. Spending energy is going to be a very fun one for this uh, speed run, which we're definitely going to be checking later. What I did for a thing to spend energy, because... Keep in mind that event wants you to spend energy. It doesn't want you to finish runs. It doesn't want you to do anything specifically. It wants you to spend energy. And there was one thing that I didn't keep in mind while doing this run. There was a free energy at some point. And free energy means you're not spending energy. But we're going to get to that later. So let's actually zoom into the point where I get Gerald. And let's just go from there. So this is the point pretty much where I got Geralt. If you get some of these dungeons in, at some point I also started doing Gwent and that kind of stuff because at some point I was just spending energy and trying to get all of my energy in. And with that, it was kind of, uh, yeah, at some point you kind of had to do just something at the meantime when you're just out of farming. That's also the chill thing. Like if you're not speedrunning this, of course, you're out of farming a lot. But the moment that you have Geralt, it's just super easy to farm stuff. I did actually put the Gerald set at some point on the Magic Mic because the Magic Mic has a lot more AoEs. But I would say the Gerald S3 somewhat disappointed about, even for like the final run in the Dragon's Abyss Heart. Gerald for the S2 cleans waves very easily, very absolutely ridiculously strong and just very easy. But this is right away where I was like, okay, I put that set over there and then the Magic Mic set, which is at this point pretty bad. I put it over there. So... Other timestamps that I could have made, but I wasn't too sure in order, uh, would be like getting the first rune set, getting the second, the third, and the fourth, and then it's like spending how much energy. So also a question you might have is like, am I going to redone, do this speedrun and check if I can get faster times? I will probably do this the moment we get the 10th anniversary event. I think that's like maybe going to be like a yearly thing or something for me, or at least for like every time that we have like a crazy good beginner event, I would probably redo a stream. I will, uh, this time I just went in straight without pretty much telling anyone like, yo, I'm gonna do like a super long stream and I'm gonna do this whole speed run. But the moment that I'm going to redo it, I will actually also announce it when I'm planning to do it, how I'm planning to do it, while things have changed, blah, 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 all of that kind of stuff. Like, of course, if the uh, Witcher collab is no longer there, I won't have the Geralt, I won't have the rune set from Geralt, but I would definitely be waiting for like either an event or anything like that. Also, the final goal line might be changing. Like, is it still going to be Dragon's Abyss Heart? Because in current meta, like, people were asking me as well, like, oh, should I farm Dragon's Abyss Heart before uh, farming Giants? The answer is yes, absolutely. The reason why, Dragon's Abyss Heart, you can clear without getting hit. Giants, Abyss Heart, you're not going to clear without getting hit. You're going to be facing that counter. And because you face that counter, you just don't want to focus on the dungeon yet because you need a lot better runes to survive the hits. You probably need more of, like, the account skills in 
you do get the account skills later on uh, onwards from level 20 so you don't have too much account skills on also uh, the account skills are limited for locking into the exact same stat because you have to be level 30 plus to lock it into the same stat so you can say like oh i just want to go full on crit damage no you can only do five levels in crit damage and then after level 30 you can max out the whole crit damage like skill if you want and that's like for people are saying like account skill was that it's the glory tower thing like the glory tower thing that switched right now to account skill you can only do that onwards from then also since artifacts are um instantly plus 15 they made a level gap for or a level like threshold for what you have to be to start farming artifacts and that level is 27 so you can't go right away saying like okay um if these artifacts are plus 15 i'm gonna get like 1500 hp on both sides on the unit the moment it's six start definitely would be a way if that was actually possible However, you need to be level 27 and that's just going to take you like a little bit of time. Like in the end, I think I ended this run with being like level 25 or something. And that is just like 10 hours of grinding, farming, whatever. Like at the first part of this game, it's very click intensive. You have to go through the storyline, all of that kind of stuff. Later than that, it's going to be a lot less click intensive and you can do a lot more things with auto. So from that point on, it starts going a lot smoother like that. So let's actually go a little bit forward to where I get a little bit more of those runes in, where I finish the scenario, and then see where it goes from there. I could have definitely made a timestamp as well for the first uh, scroll for getting the, what's it called, the first light and dark scroll, which is pretty close to here. First light and dark scroll is also one of those points where you always say like, okay, is this going to be the one unit that's going to be insanely good? Are you going to pull it from here? It's going to be a little bit later than this. But as you can see, like I pretty much zoomed through all of those units. You got so much chatting and then so much chatting for Gerald to literally one shot the boss. It's already over. So that was the thing. Like there's a lot of chatting to this. It would be nice if you can skip all of those talking. Like I'm not sure if even new players or anyone actually reads all of that stuff. You can see that most of the stuff that I'm doing is just clicking through all of those chatting things, which would definitely save a lot of times if we wouldn't have to do this point i was also like just just give me my scroll like i want to summon that one scroll and then go from there also in this run i didn't play optimal for like okay what do you want to do with the longevity of this account like if you want to get anywhere towards longevity on the account uh what should you do with it interestingly enough i don't know all of the timestamps where i summon net fives um this in this case i pulled the shaman which is actually very good for a beginner account because that actually enables you straight away for a unit that might be interesting for giants might be interesting for necro so definitely a good unit to pull on the early game account but in this case i just used it for a speed run and then didn't do anything with it i pulled a bunch of net fives we're gonna see later which net fives i pulled i don't have any of them here yet at this time however um i would say that none of them were actually useful and i think also in future speed runs let's say i would get a unit that's insanely good for dragon's abyss heart even though i think most of the free play units kind of outshine the net fives in early stages anyways but let's say i would have pulled a Verrat or a poseidon or anything like good like that i wouldn't have used it so i would only use the free to play units and gerald in this clay, uh, case is included for free to play but let's skip a little bit forward to uh finishing the scenario so here's the final scenario boss we're at a timer of two hours and 14 minutes last time i did this as a speed run which is a pretty long time ago it took me about three hours and a little bit more so definitely a good speed improvement for how fast you can clear these would you say gerald is the main factor to doing that yeah i think gerald is a pretty big factor to that but now we also get into the um following thing i have to start leveling up units and i have to start uh pretty much getting my team ready so i have to get uh Verdahl. Verdahl is actually a pretty interesting unit and that was actually also a bottleneck for this speed run a lot more than i thought because getting pheromos is very easy getting pheromos you just uh, take the fusion event and with the fusion event you can choose all of the units that you need for pheromos it's just gonna take you once again spending energy which we're gonna come back to later but once you spend that energy, you just pretty much take Veramos for free. You do need a Dark Yeti to get, so you just probably need some people in the chat to say like, okay, we have the Secret Dungeon of that. I also did get Lauren. Did I get Lauren at this time already? No, I don't think I got Lauren at this time yet. But at some point, I just asked people in the uh, Twitch chat to say like, hey, guys, can you open the Lauren Secret Dungeon? And we had like 30 people opening a Secret Dungeon. So I can cheat a little bit on that one, but that part made it definitely a lot easier. But it was definitely an interesting process as well. 
But from there, at some point, it was like, yeah, this is the point where it's like, everyone's just... And it took long, man. It literally took long. Like, none of these are Lawrence. Like, I'm like, uh, okay, now we finally have a Lawrence. So it actually took a lot. Um, I also used a whole bunch of test shares to clear it. I, I literally added in my own test share and shit. So that just makes it super easy. You have to clear it once, and then you can start autoing it afterwards, like on the, the background auto stuff. So definitely a nice way to get some of these in. I did actually notice if you want to do this properly, you probably need a max scale Lauren. In this case, I did do a few Laurens. If you want to do this properly and you want to have like a high successful team in Dragon's Abyss Heart, you do need a Laurens max skill because she doesn't have that great of an AI on her S2. And if she doesn't have S2 maxed, her activation rates are just a bunch lower. I think her skill cooldown goes minus one. So those are definitely two things that I would say like, okay, if I do another run, I would have to aim for making Lauren max skilled, which will definitely be a little bit more difficult and a little bit more time consuming. But if you want to do this properly, that is definitely something that you have to do. So Lauren is fixed right now, Gerald is fixed, Veramos I will get. Uh, and then the next thing to get is going to be that Verdahal. Verdahal is the one that I want to get. And then the last unit, the fifth unit, I was planning to use the Magic Mike. However, there's one thing for Verdahal. Um, you have the fusion units of Verdahal, and I'm going to do this by, by heart, and I think I'm not really exactly sure what those are, but there's going to be the elemental uh, thing of wind, which is like a two-star unit. Very easy to get. You even get it here for free. So I'm also already checking here for getting Veramos in and stuff like that. I started fusing the uh, Druid Melia, but in, or the Druid, no, Dryad Melia, um, they can kind of remove that whole thing. Like, they actually changed the summoner's way at some point to fuse everything towards Melia because everyone was using Melia. Currently, you can totally skip Melia. Melia is not interesting at all. So I think they should actually change that to fusing Vert. And that would be very nice because fusing Vert is a lot more interesting. However, the three units you need for fusing Vert, three out of the four are free to play because you have the um, golem that you can get at the mountain stage at like the second one or something, it's like the fire golem. Then you need another unit, I already forgot which one it is. And then you need the fire imp champion. And for the people that have seen the stream, fire imp champion did not want to get uh, summoned because the only, there's two places where you can get fire imp champion, just normally from scrolls or from the guild shop. However, there was simply no chance for me to get enough guild points on the first day to get that anywhere working. So for me at this point, I was just creating my team most likely. I was I did the, the Melia thing, but that was actually a waste of time because you don't need the Melia for a Veramos fusion. But what you do need to do is, well, of course, farm a lot of Essence. I was mainly farming a lot of Essence here, getting all of the units in, making them six stars, blah, blah, that kind of stuff. But at some point I was like, wait a minute, and that's quite a time later, and I'm gonna skip through the time quite some right now, because you can see getting Verdahal took a lot and a lot of time. I started doing like the uh, collab dungeon. Collab dungeon, if you just use all of the Witcher units, and I made a video on that, you don't. if you don't use any of your own units and all of the buffs that you have, you put that in towards the uh, collab units, you can literally auto with them, like, I did it actually manual because I was kind of bored anyways and was farming on the background, however. But you can literally do all of those dungeons with just the collab units that you get for free and you don't have to do anything. Like, you can even auto with those. Like, that's how easy the collab dungeon is. But at some point, like, I even started doing Gwent. Like, and why was I doing all of this kind of stuff? I needed scrolls. I just needed scrolls to get this Imp Champion. Like, that, that was the only thing that I was aiming for, getting scrolls. So... I had to get as many scrolls as possible to try to get that Imp Champion. But you see, I'm already six hours in. I still do not have Verdal. Why do I not have Verdal? I didn't summon the Imp Champion. Um, I don't know exactly where the timestamp is going to be, and it's going to be pretty far in the video and hard to find. But I summoned at some point all net threes on fire, except three. Fire Imp Champion was included. So I never summoned that unit. And... For that reason, at some point, I literally, uh, I used the timestamp of Verdhill to fill in Veromos because I think a little bit later than this, gonna be zooming a little bit more through. Yeah, this is where I claim all of the stuff and then you go into the next event and with the next event, you are actually able to get Veromos as well. So you get all of those units in and then you have to start fusing all of them. 
and then you, I already had all of the materials to get all of those units. Those are the units that you actually choose to get Baramos. But I used the timestamp of Vardhel, which I expected to get earlier than Baramos, for Varamos because I still didn't have a Vardhel by this point. So I was like, oh my, how the hell am I going to get Vardhel? But you do have the summon event, which I talked about later, which I uh, picked in Tyrone on my uh, alt account before the save for Abyss account. So in this case, I was like, I think it's like, I'm going to try to find every free to play scroll I can find, try to get that imp champion, even doing like a known scrolls, because from known scroll lightning, you can still get it. But I literally, I just could not get that unit. And I was already pretty much saying like, okay, um, I can already make all of my whole team six star. I can do all of that kind of stuff. I can literally do everything already. The only thing that I need to get my team ready is that Vertihile. So for that reason, at some point I was just like, okay, I'm going to use that event um, that I was thinking about the, uh, picking a Tyrone for. I'm going to use that event to pick a Verdil in worst case scenario. And at that time, where I was like seven hours in, and I was already feeling like, okay, I already have the rune sets. I can easily make those units like Max. I just have to get like the right things. Uh, spamming this dimensional rift thing is going to give you a lot of EXP and it also wastes a lot of energy and a lot of wasting of energy was definitely the way to go for doing all of this stuff so we're wasting more and more energy and we're just wasting more and more energy and we're doing all kinds of arena just to get extra scrolls in buying that fire scroll checking it out and i'm not sure here if i show it at some point do i already show it here you kind of did were able to see it i already pulled two net fives here i was able to pull two net fives that were both useless i think i pulled the um the light pure or no, wait not the light the wind pure vanilla cookie uh, that is also known as, I don't even know, Adri or something? Adri, one of those, like Angela, it's Angela. I pulled Angela and I pulled uh, Bloodja, which is the Devil Maiden Fire. And both of those, of course, not really useful for this. I also started buying like anything on this shop. I'm like, okay, if I just buy the stuff over here, you're going to get so much more scrolls. I was literally looking for anywhere, like where can I get more scrolls, more scrolls, more scrolls. Trying to get summons in, I got like a whole bunch of net force. Um, I got like a whole bunch of everything and still never actually pulling like in 250 scrolls or not even 250 scrolls so I think in like yeah 212 scrolls is what you saw there really quickly I did summon three net fives because I pulled another uh, net five at some point later so at this point I was like I, I don't even remember which one it was but also not really useful here so at this point I was like okay uh, whatever I can do uh, the only thing that I can actually do is just waste as much energy as possible to get that third hill from um the final event where you can choose like a net five summon or a net four summon sorry no not a net five so yeah here's where i show at some point i had like five left over here or something or there's just like three left at some point from that uh, five it went down to three like i didn't have any other unit or i had any other unit pretty much and i also found out like oh you can get some crystals here and there so we we're literally getting like fixing and finishing everything the only thing is i just couldn't get any uh Imp champion. The imp champion was just not there. It was just not summoning. So it would be very nice if you actually switch out the uh, druid, or not the druid, the dryad uh, summoner's way, and they change that to getting all of the units for uh, Verdihill, because I think Verdihill is very much more a more interesting unit right now for beginner players than Melia, because Melia, of course, like when we were farming like B12s, Melia made a lot of sense. You could use Melia everywhere. But Melia right now, you're you're literally gonna skip b10s you're not farming b10s it's useless to farm b10s i wouldn't recommend people to make a team to farm b10s because then you're heavily focusing on like sef tattoo you're focusing on melia blah blah um the moment that you're like okay the next step uh okay i can't use any dots that's not really going to help so yeah in this case i was just aiming for getting as much energy wasted as possible however then we had the uh next issue and the next issue was there was a uh, free energy and free energy means you're not using energy and because of that i'm like yo then i'm literally just wasting an hour but then i checked i can go in a toa stage instantly leave and then get energy that way so <laughs> during free energy my only way to get energy spent was actually going into toa clicking on the button leave spend seven energy because i actually uh noticed pretty quickly i am happy that i noticed it quickly the way normal gave me uh three energy per cost 
uh, this uh, the TOA Heart gave me, I think it was a 4 energy per cost, and the TOA Hell was a 7 energy per cost. So at some point I was just doing this all the way, like, okay, they, they, they asked me to do a bunch of these other things, like, these animations are so long, but it doesn't really matter too much. But at some point I was like, okay, if I just keep doing this all the time, then I can get all of those things in, and I at some point can get my uh, Verde Hill that way, because... It was literally the only way for me to get Verde Hill, and I still tried to get like all of the summits in that I was possibly getting, like getting all of the arenas in that I was possibly getting. But at some point, I just had to go back to doing more of this. I actually did it for like a good forty-five minutes, just to, because you get so much energy at the start, and people in chat were like, "Why the hell is he going in?" That's why I actually summoned the Verde Hill. Wait, we're going over that a little bit quickly, but that's why I actually got on the fourth one. I got the Verde Hill, which is a little bit later than this. So I finally did get that Verde Hill. I was super happy with that. And from that, I was like, okay, my team is ready. Finally got the Verde Hill, got the whole team. Everything is going to be fine. But that is where I actually walked into the next problem. So like, just, okay, uh, let's go to a little bit more of those. Man, I did this for so long. I think I had to do one more one more session of this. So let's speed it up a little bit more. So every seven that I had, so yeah, that's where I finally had Verde Hill. I was never so happy. You literally see grats, grats, grats in chat for a freaking Verde Hill. <laughs> so I finally had the third. And then it's like, okay, we have that ready. Just have to make third uh, max levels. I was like, oh, should I just feed in my net fives? <laughs> I had two net fives. I pulled one later at some point as well. But we still, like, in the end, we didn't even pull the Imp Champion. That's the funniest part about it. So now it's just, like, maxing out the third. Already had the uh, the runes and everything. And then at some point I was like, okay, there is one issue, and that is the rune sets. Any of those rune sets, there's not a single combination of the rune sets that you get where your third heal actually has max crit. And I was like, oh, shit, I didn't think of that. Because any of the sets that you combine, it doesn't matter how you combine it, they're going to be... 85 or 86 crit rate by best so i was like shit that's actually not going to work so i had this whole team ready over here already and i was like okay but can we actually because of that still do it because i getting any better runes than this is going to be quite troublesome like it's not going to be easy and working this team where your pheromone or your third heal is not 100 crit rate you're like you don't want to do that you only get crit damage slot four so you don't get crit rate slot four like Come to us, give us an early crit rate slot for one of those rune sets, please. But yeah, at this point I was like, okay, I, I just I'll just send it and I'll just see if I can do the dragon. So that was a B6. Was still looking all to fine. At this point, I also would say that the Geralt's uh skill three was kind of disappointing. I was not doing all too much damage. And for that reason, I was like, mm, I'm not too sure if I like the unit that much. The S2 definitely does do a lot of damage, but the S3, it needs like a higher multiplier on enemy max HP. That is pretty much like the main thing it does. Like even in here, you already see that it's kind of slow. And also the big thing that I was uh, missing was the uh, Lauren. Lauren didn't have max skills, so Lauren activation rates on the strip mainly, on the S2, isn't that high. So if she does need to strip, it's kind of annoying. But this team, it pretty much made it that the boss barely took any turns. It would have been better if that Lauren actually uh, was able to strip more properly. And I did notice at some point that I wanted to change the runes, still trying to get that uh, max crit rate, but that was not possible. And I also changed the Feramos to more of a damage set where he also had like some... Or this is actually where I took uh, Feramos off the damage set. But I placed him back on the damage set later because his S2 is enemy max HP scaling. Definitely something you want to have in there. And I use the Magic mic for uh, mainly CCing and that kind of stuff. But Magic mic is not really that great for CCing. Because in this case, you don't have any slow on the right tower. So a Spectra would definitely be better. But the Spectra would only be better the moment that you have 2A. But as you can see, B10, we were able to clear it. Uh, at that point, uh, I was just trying to get like a few runes in. Like I was just kind of trying to search like, okay, where do you get other runes? If you do Karazhan, you actually get a few runes from those. You have to craft a few runes, then you get a few runes. But that is also a crit damage 4 rather than a crit rate 4 on the blade one. So it did roll a little bit better for me, but still in the end, I couldn't really make the crit rates to enough where it would have been enough. So it was still kind of like struggling on that. So you do need a little bit of farming besides the runes that you get normally to get uh, your team in properly. So yeah, I ended up with like 86 crit rate, which is definitely not optimal because... 
He also doesn't have max skill, so he's gonna use the S1 quite often, so it's really not that optimal. I was trying, like, okay, if I'm gonna do some uh, Giants, maybe I get some of the runes from Giants, so I did spend a little bit of time on that. And then afterwards, we just go back to the Dragons, and this is where I, at some point I was like, okay, I'm just gonna make everything 65 accuracy. It's not that easy to get 65 accuracy on those units, because... A lot of the rune sets don't really allow you to go 65 accuracy right off the get-go. You can get pretty close though, but it was not entirely like there. We had the Lauren at 65 over here. That was definitely an important one, but I had to make it slower. Of course, it's better if you have that on fire or anything. Uh, the Magic Mike also made 65 at some point, but it was definitely like a lot of rune management. The Veramos is also 65 over here and then has like crit damage that was super low crit rate. But this is actually the run where I was like, okay, um, if I don't uh, stun the crystals at mid, I also get screwed. And that's also where I noticed that the Varamos S2 skill ups are very important because the moment that the side crystals start taking turn and Varamos is absolutely the best unit to prevent that, um, yeah, that's just the main thing that helps out. So I was missing uh, skill ups on Varamos for, I think I missed like four devil months or something. Those were definitely obtainable to get if you cleared like the. Uh, 10 times out of farm or like if there was just another event for uh, getting that in or th there were definitely some options to get Veramos max skilled in the first 10 hours but it was also the at some point the thing that i was like okay it's not really working too much so at this point i was also like am i going to um just call it a day or gonna spend like i don't know how many more hours to try to get those uh extra crit raiders on third or do I try to get like the extra Dovermons? There were a few places I could get Dovermons, but weren't really that easy things. Like it would definitely take me a good amount of time. And it was more like time waiting rather than time playing. And that, that was for the most, uh, the part where I was like, okay, I'm not entirely sure if I'm looking forward to waiting a lot of time rather than playing a lot of time, especially after the third thing that already took me super long. So in this case, we had the Lorne not going for a skill. The Lorne just went for full resistance on the S2. We did actually manage to strip it and we did actually manage to kill it. Was this a very successful run in the end? Like if we would have uh, let it run 10 times, it probably succeeded like four or five times. But the big issues were no skill ups on the Veramos, no skill ups on the Lauren, no skill or um, no crit rate on the, or no max crit rate on the Verdahel. Would I have added in a better fifth unit as in a Tyrone, but I couldn't chase the, the chase for the Tyrone because I had to go for a summon of the Verdil. Tyrone, of course, would have been a lot better. Would you have uh, a Spectra 2A? Would, of course, been a lot better. But I would only say, like, if I would redo this whole thing, if I would figure out a way to get uh, Veramos skills better, if I don't get unlucky on the pool of the Imp Champion, and if I actually max skill a Lorne, which will definitely take a little bit more time, but I think I could have done all of this in eight hours, and that's including, like, maxing out the Lorne. And that's mainly if I don't get unlucky on the vertical because currently I did spend a lot of time trying to or doing things like a little bit slower, not spending as much energy, trying to get a vertical, getting all kinds of scrolls to get vertical in. And I think if you actually want to speed up this whole process, you would have to start doing the TOA um, hard thing or yeah, the, no wait, the TOA hell thing of wasting energy a lot earlier. Because if you waste your energy a lot earlier and you're going to get a lot of crystals and a lot of energy, you can probably get uh, Veramos. I got Veramos in seven hours right now. I'm very sure because you get... Oh yeah, that's my... That was my third net five. I still didn't pull an aim champion by this point. I got three net fives and like 250 scrolls, but no aim champion. <laughs> oh, that was freaking hilarious though, but... Yeah, definitely a very interesting, fun run. Uh, definitely a few things that I could learn from. Definitely a few things that if people want to do a similar speed run or start a new account or anything like that, that people could look at like, oh, you could do something like that. Would I recommend people to go into TOA Hell and waste their energy at the start? No, no, don't do that. That's just something you do for a speed run. Normally, you just play, you use your stuff useful. and But I would definitely say getting the route to getting to Dragon's Abyss hard fast within like two, three, four days if you kind of know the game. Make it a week if you're not that familiar with the game, can't spend that many hours on it. But definitely, I would say that this is for your first week. Kind of something that you could maybe use for like, okay, these are the things to aim for. Get that Lauren in, get that Veramos in, get that Verd in. Start trying to get the team where you have like 100 crit rate. I do have the video on it, like what are the easiest rune requirements. You just need that 100 crit rate. You need the 65 accuracy. A little bit of rune farming here and there will do. And with that, you can definitely get a Dragon's Abyss hard team in pretty fast. 
and yeah that's just the main to go uh, main thing to go at this point i was also like am i gonna call it a run like in the end we couldn't really farm it we had like a 40 percent success rate on uh dragon's abyss heart if i would have let it run like a bunch of times or like times 10 it would probably have succeeded at some point if it gets good rng but truth to be told you do know the skill ups on lauren you do need the skill ups on Veramos, and you do need that max crit rate on uh Vertile. and with that the fifth unit could have been the magic mic could have been lapis it wouldn't be that much of a problem probably but it, it would be a lot better if that was a spectra or anything like that so with that i'm also gonna call the video if you want to do this properly i would say in 12 hours very doable if you get that spectra 2a because that would give you another devilmon and then also have spectra 2a which is a lot better unit than the magic mic mainly because of the slow if you put the tyrone in there it's a lot better of course so definitely i think if you do this very fast it could be doable within eight hours if you get a little bit lucky on the uh, veramos uh, or on the verde hell as well you start far wasting energy earlier on and that's also where my game crashed and i was like okay with that game crash i think Comto was just trying to tell me that you should end the game and this speed run <laughs> that's all set up but i was like yeah that, that's what we're gonna do so even the the segment thing also crashed at this point so i was like okay the, the whole thing everything crashed shit is going the, the the universe is telling me it's fine say you couldn't make it in 10 hours well the first thing was like is this going to be 24 hour stream is this going to be 12 hour stream at some point like at six seven hours i was like probably i can do it under 12 and at some point it's like i can probably do it under 10 but then i noticed that the team that the runes that you get is not good enough yet so you need a little bit more for that but i definitely hope that you appreciate this video of just me recapping the whole speed run like because looking at a 10 hour vod is going to be kind of boring as well because there's no sound under it or i have to edit sound under it and then i would have to render it for like 10 hours but i think just this video of like half an hour a little bit more probably of just talking about like what went wrong what went right what are the ideas behind it what was the main theme what are the things that we actually found the solution to like the free energy for example if there was no free energy i probably would not have thought about it to waste my energy in um what's it called in toa also if there was no free energy i could still waste energy by just doing repeat runs while also doing the toa skips so with the toa skip like if we make a, a, a glitch thing like wait 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 how is it called yeah we have like 100 percent run and then toa skip run and that kind of bullshit no, it's just for fun i don't really expect people to be speed running so much in the first place it's very depending on like what kind of events are running at that time but it was just a fun stream definitely enjoyed doing it um next time uh, let me also know for next time if you have any ideas for it for a speed run also next time i'm going to be promoting it a little bit more we're going to be planning a little bit more of saying like okay i'm gonna do it at that and that moment maybe do some like kind of test things that i would say like okay maybe i can get stuff over here or over there but definitely was a very fun experience i hope you enjoyed it i hope you also enjoyed this video if you did like this video and subscribe to the channel uh the twitch vault is still going to be there for another like i think like two weeks or something like that if you want to check out the whole twitch vault of like the 10 hour stream that is definitely still there uh twitch links the discord links everything is down in the description below guys thanks a lot for watching i'll see you as always in the next one thanks for watching if you would like to see more guides join the discord and check out the content tab which has the dungeon guide archive and the video guide archive which contains all of the guides that you need hope to see you there